Phosphate is a mineral which our bodies need in relatively small amounts for healthy bone and we get it from our food. The problem with renal disease is that phosphate tends to accumulate in the body and that can cause other problems. Kidneys, when they're working, get rid of excess phosphate very easily, but unfortunately dialysis doesn't. So when the kidneys don't work, the phosphate levels build up and can become very difficult to control. And it's a bit like having high blood pressure. You may not know you've got very high phosphate levels until something goes wrong. You may just get some very bad, nasty itching, but unfortunately phosphate can also deposit in the blood vessels and cause damage there, and also increase the risk of having heart disease. Calcium and phosphate can mix together and form a chalky substance, which can deposit in tissues other than the bones and cause the skin to break down and make it very difficult to heal. And this can be very bad news. People on dialysis face a, a bit of a balancing act because on the one hand, uh, too much phosphate can be harmful, but on the other hand, they need protein to stay well nourished. And phosphate and protein tend to be in the same foods. We try to help people make informed decisions. We like to give patients uh, as much choice as possible, but ultimately it's the patients that take control of their own diet and medications for themselves that tend to do well. I can eat high protein foods like chicken, turkey, pork, lamb and beef. And with the fish, I can eat haddock, cod, tuna and salmon. And with dairy, I can actually eat cottage cheese. So still got quite a wide variety. There are some high protein foods that I don't have very often, like milk, cheese, yogurts and ice cream, nuts and seeds, and certain fishes like sardine, pilchards, whitebait and kippers. Liver and pate are high, and crabs, scampi and prawns. Yeah, I think the main thing I've done is I've reduced my milk intake, because I know that's very high in phosphate. Uh, so I don't have milk on cereal and if I have a cup of tea I only have a small amount of milk. Um, so yeah it's basically just watching what dairy products I eat more than anything but milk's the main thing. If I'm making scrambled eggs um, I would always try and use the, the protein side of it which is the egg whites and I generally try to use more egg whites than the yolks of the eggs which have more phosphate in them. I manage my phosphate intake uh, by eating a lot of fruit and vegetable because they're low in phosphate. I heard uh, foods like um, lentil, dal, chickpeas and beans, they're quite high in phosphate. Uh, but on the other side, if we see they're good in protein, uh, so I eat them a lot and um, they're fine if we eat them instead of meat and fish. I also, if I'm going shopping, for example, I would um, make sure that I only buy um, meat from the counters um, and not the processed meat that have more phosphate in them. There are a few other high phosphate foods best avoided on the whole. Foods like chocolate, cola drinks, malted drinks or cocoa, stout, peanut butter, yeast extracts, beef extracts, bran and anything with a lot of baking powder in it like scones for example. Well, apart from food, the other most important way to keep phosphate levels down is to take medications that we call phosphate binders. Well, phosphate binders need to be taken whenever you eat, so either before, during or after a meal. They work by actually binding onto or clinging onto the phosphate in the food, which stops it being digested and absorbed by the body. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some need to be chewed, some crushed, some swallowed whole. Um, some patients may have side effects from one which may be well tolerated by someone else so it's important to just keep trying until we find the right one for you. Um, for many patients it's impossible to achieve a low blood phosphate level without them. You can vary the number of phosphate binders that you take according to the size of the meal and actually how much phosphate content there is in the food. A typical day for me would be most probably toast and jam, which I would take one binder. Uh, for lunch, a tuna and cucumber sandwich with some fruit and a shortbread, I would take three binders. For my evening meal, which will be a bigger meal, I have a chicken breast with some potatoes and vegetables and a pudding. I would take four binders. And in the evening, I have a snack like half a tea cake, 
with a cup of tea and I would take one binder. If a patient's not happy with the phosphate binder that they're taking, then the important thing is to talk to any member of the team and we can look at prescribing something else for them that may suit them much better. There are different types of binders you can take. Um, I, I used to be on nine binders a day, but I was told of a different binder that I could take and that dose reduced to three a day. Uh, so there are different variations you can take. I remember um, maybe some months back where um, my skin was very itchy and um, I spoke with one of my consultants who advised me that I wasn't taking enough binders and um, they upped my binders and within maybe a couple of weeks the, the itching subsided you know, and um, I felt much better for it. For a patient to really know which is the binder that suits them best, it's going to be the one that they're happy taking because that means that then they're going to take it and that's the most important thing. To remember my binders, I try and put some out on the, on the counter in the kitchen uh, so that they're always there in view whenever I go to eat. And if I'm going out somewhere, uh, I tend to put some in a container, leave it in my coat, coat or jacket. Uh, so that I know I've always got some with me. A top tip for patients to remember to take their phosphate binder is that they don't ever forget their mobile phone. So by having a little pill pouch attached to your phone, you're not going to forget to take your binders. Yeah, I always take my binders uh, with me in my bag, in my purse. Uh, so one bottle is always in my bag. I don't take that out because I know I'm, whenever I'm going out, usually I forget to take my binders with me. So if we are going out, we're having meal outside, my binders are with me, I'm taking with my meal. My dietitian he gave me um, a little device that I can put in my fridge. And um, each time I open my fridge door, this, this noise will come out, this person will say, um, um, are you peckish? Don't forget to take your phosphate binder. So, you know, that's, that's one way I remember. I never forget to take them. As you know, medicines are coming in safe, secure uh, medicine pots. So I put medicine pots in different places in my house, like in the kitchen, in the dining, dining room and in my bedroom. And uh, so they are in visible places, so I, I don't forget to take them with my meal. I keep an eye on my blood results um, because I try to keep to my diet. So I, I do write a diary every day so that if I am naughty and have an extra snack, I can actually take an extra binder. It's something that I can control on the renal process. It's very important for me uh, to manage and control my phosphate level because uh, I want to feel well and healthy. The key message here is all about taking control to prevent high levels of phosphate happening in the first place. And by taking control, what we mean is having good dialysis but taking the right medication and following the right diet. Our experience here is that patients that take an active interest in their own treatment are the ones that tend to do well. So although it's very much a team approach with the, the dietitians, the doctors and the nurses all on hand to provide support, it's the patients that take control for themselves that ultimately do well.